In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made a single cedar porch swing. Stay tuned. I'll be making my porch swing from cedar material because it's extremely lightweight, but also weather resistant. I first traced out all the parts I'll need for my swing on the cedar boards, then cut them to rough length over at the miter saw. This is about my third or fourth time making a porch swing, so I do have templates for the swing already available. And if you're interested in them, I do have them available over on my website, and I do have a link for you down in the description below. Once all of the templates were traced on my boards, I cut the pieces out over at the bandsaw. Taking the arm piece of the swing, I started cutting out the cup holder. To cut out the cup holder and the arms, I first drilled a hole in the center with a drill bit, then used a jigsaw, using my super jaws to hold the piece in place while I made the cut. I cleaned up this cut by using the largest spindle over at my spindle sander. If you do not have a spindle sander, then of course a little bit of hand sanding will also do the trick. After I got all of the parts cut out, I went over all of them using 120 grit sandpaper in my Palm Random Orbital Sander. And just a tip, if you're also using cedar, I always run my boards through a thickness planer to start with to smooth out the rough side, and this saves a lot of time on the sanding stage. To soften the edges, I stuck a round over bit in my router table and ran all of the parts through, even getting the inside of the cup holder. With all of the pieces cut and ready to assemble, I moved on to assembly. I started by joining the front stretcher of the two vertical arm supports. I'm using carriage bolts to assemble the majority of the swing. There are two bolts at this connection, so I first drilled a through hole for the first bolt. Then, before drilling the second, I placed the bolt in the hole to keep it aligned while I drilled the second. Carriage bolts can be a little difficult to work with if you don't get the head of the bolt sunk in properly before trying to tighten it down. I always use a mallet to hit the head into the wood slightly before flipping the piece over and tightening on a flat washer and a nylon locking nut. Next, I repeated the process to connect the bottom support piece to the back support piece. Again, since I have two holes here, I drilled one, placed a bolt to hold its position, then drilled the second. Now, to join the two made assemblies together, the bottom supports connect very easily to this front assembly. I always use a speed square to make sure that they are being attached square, then hold them in place while I pre-drill with a countersink and then drive in a screw. And even though I pre-drill, I always pause the music in my ISO tunes so that I can listen and make sure that the wood is not splitting as I'm driving in these screws. The swing will be outside on my porch, so I am using exterior grade hardware on the entire swing. After getting one support attached, I repeat it on the other side. Next, I connected the arms. Using a spacer to make sure that the gap between the back of the arm and the back support is enough to later receive a slot. Then also making sure the arm is level. Of course, first double checking that the workbench I'm working on is level. The arms are attached in the back with a carriage bolt. So while the arm is in place, I drilled a through hole, then shoved in the bolt. I did place a washer and a nut on this bolt, but I didn't tighten it down yet because the chain for the swing will later be attached to this bolt, which you'll see in just a few minutes. The cup holder is made up of two pieces joined together at a 90 and then joined to the swing. I pre-drilled, then used screws to join it all together. Now a cup or even your phone can be placed into the cup holder as you're swinging. And that is the body of the swing done. Now it's worth noting that these same templates can be used to make a double cedar porch swing as well. You would just need to make more back and bottom supports and then also make the slots longer, which is the part of the build that we're getting into now. To make slots easier, you can buy one by two boards from the store, but I have found it very hard to find boards that are straight enough to use. So instead, I buy wider boards and then rip them down to make the slots. And this route is also cheaper. After getting the boards ripped, I then run them through the router table with the same round over bit to soften the edges. To get them to their needed length, I set up a stop block over at the miter saw and then very quickly cut everything to size. 
When attaching the slats, I start off by placing the very front one, then moving to the back and placing the very back one, just to keep the seat square as I'm assembling it. The process of attaching the slats is easy, but it is a little time consuming, as each connection requires a pre-drill with a countersink and then a screw to drive in. To speed things up, I get two drills going, one with each needed bit in them. Then also, I use a spacer to make spacing spot on, but also faster. Once all of the slats on the bottom were attached, I repeated the process for the back of the swing. These slats are flush with the sides of the back support, so it's easy to align them each time, whereas the slats for the bottom have a slight overhang on each side. And there we go, folks. One porch swing, body done. Let's move on to a protective finish. While cedar is resistant on its own, I'm not a fan of how cedar grays out over time when exposed to the sun. To protect my swing, I am applying the Minwax Hellsman Spar Urethane, which will not only protect the swing from moisture, but also from UV rays. This is my go-to finish for any outdoor pieces. Now you can apply the finish directly to the swing out of the can. However, to make spreading it a little bit easier, I added a small amount of mineral spirits to thin it just slightly. I poured some of the spar urethane into a secondary container and then stirred in some mineral spirits. Now I can use a natural bristle brush to apply the finish all over the swing, making sure to get the flat surfaces as well as the edges and the back. And this finish will protect my swing from grain out over time, even though it will be exposed to the sun. After giving it all a good coating, I set that swing aside so it could start drying. Then grab the second swing I made, which is actually a gift from my neighbors, and then attach the chain so I could hang it up and test it out. I first popped out the top carriage bolt on the front of the swing and then reattached it after threading on the chain. I also did the same to the carriage bolt in the back support. And since the chain prevents the head of the carriage bolt from sinking into the wood, I used a pair of pliers to hold the head while I tightened down on the nut. At this point, I left all of the chains long because it is always a process to test and tune the position of the hooks on a swing to get the tilt as well as the height just right. Yeah. Wow, oh, this is where it's at. I was actually about to call this project done when my father-in-law suggested adding a tethering option so that I can tether the swing to the foundation when the swing is not in use and prevent it from being slung all over the place by the wind. I thought this was a great idea, so I drilled an anchor into the side of my slab, cut a piece of chain that'll keep the swing on a tight leash essentially, and then added a hook so that I could grab onto a flat washer that I attached to the swing. Okay, that's a wrap. Okay, and that's going to wrap up this project. If you're interested in building your own swing, then I do have the templates available that you can use to either make a single seater porch swing like this one, or even a more traditional two person porch swing. But I'm also gonna be doing a flat pack ready to assemble kit option to where if you just want all the parts to show up to your door to where all you have to do is assemble them, then I will have that option available. So check the link down in the description if you're interested. Other than that, I hope that you enjoyed the project and I will see you on my next one. Have to sit in this sucker. Relax a bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.